productivity in business. I know that it isn't one that we all dream of. We don't dream of being hugely productive. And then there's times where we go, actually, I wish I was more productive. Or we look on and we see other people getting stuff done and getting stuff out there and think, hmm, look at them, they're super productive and I am just not. And I think that the big thing is that um, productivity leads to profitability. And when you are more productive, when you are getting more stuff done, then you become um, more profitable. Because as long as you are focusing on the profitable actions in your business, then your increase in profit productivity will increase your profits. So how do we go about starting to look at our productivity? You can get the free productivity Bible, okay, and I will put the link around um, this video. So you can get a hold of this, and it, it's a bit of a chunky monkey, but it's talking about how you can become more productive in your business. The things that, that you can do, the main barriers to productivity. We talk about impossible time frames. We talk about planning that you won't follow through with. So wastes of time. We talk about um, 10 things that you can be doing that will make you more productive from home. And I'm not just going to read through this because if you want to get your hands on it, then you absolutely can. And, you know, I think that it's a great place for you to uh, really start to enhance and up that productivity. One that I want to talk about first is about switching off the noise. Okay, so we become a slave to notifications. We become a slave to emails. We become a slave to all things that ping into our world, whether it is on our computers or whether it is on our phones, we become an absolute slave to the stuff that is going on um, in our world. So it's really important that we look at ways that we can minimise that noise. And the first one is to make sure that you have a little bit of a cleanse. And I know that this always sounds like a bit of a job, um, but I will uh, also pop in a little video that will help you to cleanse um, what you've got coming into your newsfeed, what you've got coming into your timeline, so that you can see the stuff that you want to see in your newsfeed, so that you aren't just, you know, reacting to every single notification. It's also a great one to um, prioritise and set aside times to respond to things. So I uh, told a story the other day on my Facebook page about the fact that I had messaged a Facebook business page and I had said to them um, that I wanted some more information about the services that they offered. It took them 18 days, yes, 18 days to respond to that message. Obviously, that's not cool. I'd already gone and I'd had my needs met elsewhere. Um, but you can set aside time to respond to messages on Facebook, to respond to your emails. You can set aside time that is your time to do that kind of action to, um, you know, it might be twice a day, it might be once a day, it might be um, first thing in the morning, lunchtime and evening, you know, whatever it is, set aside time for responding and replying to messages. Yes, we have got ourselves into this instantaneous kind of society, but it doesn't need to be that way. And if it is compromising you actually getting on with your work, then it's going to hinder your progress. It's going to hinder your growth. One of the great ones that um, is often banded around in my Beyond Ordinary Business Hub um, when people are talking about ways to avoid distraction is uh, aeroplane mode. So going onto aeroplane mode on your uh, phone, on your laptop, whatever it might be, because the use of aeroplane mode means that you're not going to get bombarded with those messages. It means that you're not going to get that constant message cycle going on in your world. It means that you can take that noise away a little bit and then you can turn that on and off. There's also a number of apps that can ban you from certain social media sites. So if you can't trust yourself, you can have yourself banned from certain social media sites um, while you look at cracking on with the work that you've got in hand. So we talk about groups, we talk about news feeds, we talk about um, inboxes and the things that you can do to make those a better place. We also talk about how you can get stuff done when time's really tight, which is an important one. Um, creating systems for your business and how that works, particularly for creative entrepreneurs, because lots of us are very, very resistant to systems in our business. Um, because once we get caught in a system, we feel like it's just... Uh, 
and it's stifling our creativity. Lots of checklists in there to uh, help you to check out what you're doing. But this is the great one, and it's about what should you be doing. And this is a bit of an overview of the tasks that actually should have your attention in your business. So this is us talking about profitable productivity. So we could say that we're sat at our computers all day long and that we're working all day long, but is that really the truth? Are we actually getting on with the stuff that we should be doing or are we spending that one hour time worrying? So lots of people will say that they have, you know, spent a whole day at work and they have not made any progress, but actually what they've done is they've spent that um, four hours, six hours, eight hours, whatever it might be, worrying about, you know, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I don't know how to do it. And actually, that's one exhausting. Two, it's not very productive. It's not going to help you to move forward. It's not going to help you to take action. I am very much into the action steps. What can you do to start to move things forward? What action can you take? to start to get results. And when I look at the things that I should be doing, you know, these are the things that I should be doing. I should be creating. So this is the creation of content. I should be creating things. I should be creating videos. I should be creating podcasts. I should be doing Facebook Lives. I should be creating written work. Creation, writing. So I need to be um, working on the books that I've got going on. I need to be working on um, the I'm a Flipping Rockstar, the journal. I need to be working on um, the stuff that is, is the written word. Service. So I need to concentrate on service. So these are things that need to come into my eye line every single week. And recording. The other things are outsourcing. So, you know, what doesn't need my physical attention can be outsourced. We do get into the habit of... Um, doing tasks in our business and going through the motions, simply to go through the motions, and this isn't very productive. So it's a great opportunity, and I take um, a week out of my diary every quarter to do an overview of my business, and I look at, you know, are, am I doing things that actually don't need to be done? Am I wasting my time, my effort, my energy, and my attention on stuff that isn't productive and profitable? Am I wasting my time, my effort, my energy, and my attention on things that aren't growing my business? Do these things need to still be done? If those things do need to still be done, can they be outsourced? Then there's the ability to look at where you are placing your time, your effort, your energy, and your attention. You are much better off spending 15 minutes working really, really productively than spending four hours scrolling through social media or beating yourself up about what you've got going on. So we've got some bits about helping you to, you know, really align with your message. We've got a little planner for this week. Um, we've got a to-do list to start you to think about getting stuff done. We've got some journal prompts. And, you know, the, there's a couple of things that really make me hyper-productive. And one of them is being able to take my notes. And I use, and you can see them over my shoulder up there, the I'm a flipping rock star, the journal, to capture all of my information, all of my notes, all of the things that I want to um, think about, that I need to process. If you just keep everything in your head, your head is going to explode, all right? And that isn't going to be pretty, and that isn't going to be nice, and you're going to always end up overwhelmed. Taking stuff out of your head and having it in one place that is brilliant for you, capturing that information, is really, really good for you. So I'm a flipping rock star, the journal is just there. If you want to get your hands on one for yourself I'll put the link in but also the other thing that I use is the um the work pad the the desk pad and I love this because it means that even when I've got a tiny weeny pocket of time I can take something off this list so it means that I can be productive in small hits of time so if I finish a client call 10 minutes early I can grab one of these things on the list I'm less likely to waste that time if I've got productive tasks set out that I can start to work through. And I'll continue to add to this list, I'll cross things off this list. Also has the ideas jar so I can stick in any ideas that I want to go and journal out further into there. And it also has a little bit of a self-talk check-in. So if you do find yourself stuck in worrying or procrastination or getting stuck, then that is the place to you know, really blast it out quickly. 
Being more productive is about focusing on profitable activity. It is about being mindful of the activity that you are undertaking each and every day in your business. And it is about making sure that you are using your time wisely. Like I said, 10, 15 minutes of really intensive, good work, really kind of focused work is much better than hours and hours and hours of scratching and scrambling and being frustrated and being overwhelmed and being annoyed. So you can get more productive in shorter periods of time. That's the message for today. Speak soon.